latest episode of Gallifrey Pirate Radio, where we are uh, interviewing uh, Lee Cummings from Tiny Rebel Games, and we are specifically talking to him about Doctor Who the Leg- Legacy. Um, before we uh, get started with the, the Doctor Who stuff, um, can you tell us a little bit about Tiny Rebel Games? Um, so Tiny Rebel Games is uh, my wife and the, the smart of the pair, Susan Cummings. Uh, Susan and I have been in the games industry for... 15 years together, uh, together doing games together, about nine of that. Susan was one of the co-founders of 2K Games, and she signed games like Bioshock and, and Borderlands and the, the latest Civilization games and a bunch of stuff. Um, I produced uh, a bunch of Grand Theft Autos, uh, and the, we ran the, the design team on a game called Bully for a while, uh, and then she left 2K and I left Rockstar, and we started a company together. Uh, and then we did a bunch of casual stuff, and then we moved into... Things we love. We had the freedom to sort of do things we love. So we worked on a Star Trek game, we worked on a World of Worlds game, and then we started a, a small publishing company at the beginning of last year, which is Tiny Rebel Games, uh, with the express intent of doing our first mobile game, and that was Doctor Who Legacy. Uh, we worked with the BBC last year, and we've been uh, we're up for an, a BAFTA for the Family Games category, yeah. uh, and a bunch of other stuff has come out of it. We're getting good reviews, and the fans seem to love it, which was all, it was always supposed to be a game, you know, by fan. You know, we are legitimately. <laughs> I grew up with it. Susan and I watched, you know, the last seven seasons of the reboot several times before we even started thinking about making a game. You know, over the last, uh, you know, decade, and we really wanted to do a Doctor Who game that came sort of from what we loved about Doctor Who. Uh, not, you know, we didn't want to do the typical. Here's a Doctor on one adventure and with one companion, and it's great, and it feels like an episode of the show. Um, but what we love Doctor Who is is the depth, and the texture of everything, and when. You know, so I'm going to ramble. I'll just keep rambling. No, do it. Do an example of it. My example is go. rambling is started a few weeks ago. Was the um, the Christmas episode, the regeneration episode? You can, what was it like one in three people in the UK watch that, and you got all these these casual people who watch it, and they watch it because it's a big thing, and they know what Doctor Who is, and then you have the more, you know, you call yourself a fan, and they understand it's a regeneration episode, and that brings something new to them. And then the really hardcore fans understand it's a, it possibly the last regeneration, and there's going to be something big there. And, and we tune in for that, you know, and, and there's always this gradient of Doctor Who. And the more you get into it, there's so much depth and, and the, you know, the, the, the personalities and the, these long, you know, who is the Brigadier? You know, that means something very different to a hardcore Doctor Who fan than somebody who's seen him in one episode. Uh, so we love that depth. We just love the, just the 50 year of canon and, and how well it's come together and all the creativity behind it is something we really love. So we wanted to make a game which, which embraced all of that, which is more platform to go through everything that's ever been done in Doctor Who, and at least abstract it away in some way to some sort of video game. It <laughs> sort of was our intent with Doctor Who. I'm just trying to pick my jaw up off the ground because I've played so many of those games, and I had no idea that you guys were part of all that stuff. And then you just seem like an incredible Whovian. I mean, I could probably talk to you for hours just about Doctor Who at this point. <laughs> So, yeah, we, we were really lucky, Susan and I, that we, we did a lot of original IP very early in our, in our sort of game industry, um, you know, roles and, and our, our jobs. We, that was all done early, so we, we, we don't feel the urge to rush out and create new worlds. We're much more of the mind of, you know, there's so much we love around us that's out there. Like War the, when we did the War of the Worlds game, we love War of the Worlds. We loved everything about it. So we'll go make a game on it, we'll bring our love to it, and we'll treat it like it's an original IP. There's not going to be any less love there just because we're not coming up with the core experience. And that's, that's sort of what we bring to the table is a lot of love. We'll do it properly. We'll, we'll, this won't be some throwaway little project because it's an IP. It'll be something for the fans, you know, that people will love, and it'll live out there, and it'll, it'll live and grow over time and, and be something that people of all ages can pick up and, and interact in a very different way, you know, between episodes of Doctor Who. Yeah, and one thing I've noticed is just how receptive you have been towards the fans with listening to what they have to say and stuff like that, because I follow you on Facebook, and I'm always reading up what you guys are doing. And, I mean, you just it's, – it's great that you're so interactive with the fans, because there's so many companies out there that just ignore the fans. But, I mean, I, we're right there with them. I, I, I don't – yeah, I don't understand at all. We made this game for fans, for you guys. It's, it, we made this game explicitly for people like you. Why the hell wouldn't we listen to you guys on, uh, as, on an ongoing basis? Um, you know, this we, we just started doing this. Um, you know, while we're waiting for the season five stuff to come together, we're doing you know a, a fan character of the week. We'll just release every single week, and that all came from fans. We just went to different polls. You know, we have a subreddit. They did a poll on there of who they wanted. We read every single comment of every on our Facebook page where we asked. We went through there. We we do. We care. 
because it matters to us. So, you know, having Handel's first uh, was great. Having um, Stormageddon coming this week was something that we never, that was the most surreal thing ever. You tried pitching to a company while you should have a toddler in a, in a game. It, I have had uh, more, more of my friends name their children, at least their middle name, Stormageddon, <laughs> than anything else. It, it's That's amazing. That, you know, all these people, I have a child with the middle name Stormageddon, because I won't lie, I know when and if I ever have a kid, it's getting Stormageddon as a middle name. I mean, that's, it's just something you, who needs to do now. My wife has uh, said without any form of argument that Stormageddon will not be the name of New York. <laughs> uh, so, as we were going over baby names not too long ago, I did mention the name Adric, and she... <coughs> Adric's a nice name, yeah. So... Uh, I won't ever let her watch any... Uh, Try to sneak. Oh. you got to sneak as many old Doctor Who names in there that she would never be able to reference back. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't want her to ever regret it. But uh, speaking back uh, your response with the, um, the public on Facebook, we went and we read through a vast majority of those responses on Facebook to the um, your favorite... How do you phrase it? The... Um, they're, they're very well, like, favorite episodes, but they're obsessed. Isn't typically a fan favorite or something, it, right? It, that one? Yeah, really, because I wanted to see what, the, before we knew, when we knew we were doing the interview, I wanted to see what the fan base was like on, on uh, Facebook to see, you know, I was expecting more of the new Who stuff. And there was a lot of classic information on there, a lot of yeah, episodes, and really well thought out ideas. And those top 10 were impressive. We read, we went through more. I think we had 1,400 when I sat down that morning to go through. I read every single one. You know, we, we care. This isn't going to be something where it just gets thrown up there and people reply and nobody reads it. You know, we, right. we really, we generally do care. And they, I found them amazingly interesting to read. And I know our producer at the BBC that morning read them and he was sending us emails just like, how great is this? That people are really engaging. And so, yeah, yeah, this is a great thing. This is community, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So when it came to Doctor Who Legacy, did you pitch it to the BBC or did the BBC come to you? How did that, how did that genesis take place? So, let's have a look. Feb about February last year, uh, we decided we wanted to do a mobile game. We'd never done a mobile game before. We, we've done DS games, so we've done mobile mobile, but not new mobile. You know, the year of free to play and all this stuff. And we, we, what we love about the games industry is just doing things we've never done before. We've done every, you know, we've done cooking games. We, you know, we've done we've done a puzzle game in the past, and we wanted to do something which was mobile, and we wanted to do beyond something we loved. So we started talking to various companies about you know what might be out there that we loved. And one thing we were deep in the middle of was Sherlock. And the first email we sent to BBC Worldwide was, you know, could, I know this is crazy coming from, you know, two people in a room, but is there a chance of doing a Sherlock game? And they were like, no, but is there anything else you love about BBC? And we had, Susan and I looked at each other and we were like, should we write back and we say Doctor Who or is that just absurd? If we can't get Sherlock, there's no way we'll get Doctor Who. So we sent an email and we it was a very high level pitch and it was, um, you know, we want to do something which goes through the whole history. You know, it's not just going to be a single standalone thing. And they asked us to come in for a meeting. And I stood with a whiteboard with BB two guys from BBC America. And I sketched, the, pretty much as we released it, I sketched the whole game out in, in a lot of detail. And immediately they understood, immediately they were on board. And it was, it was pretty clean sailing from there. Uh, you know, when, when we got builds in, they would go straight to the BBC. There's no there's full transparency. They see everything we see. Because there's, there's no reason to do it any other way. Uh, so there was much as part of the team as, as anyone else's. Uh, so that's sort of how it happened. So I think it was like March the 5th, I think, around there we did up the first pitch to the BBC. It was signed four or six weeks later. And then we worked through the summer building out the tech in the back end, working out the episodes we wanted. And then we started building levels in September, October, right up to like the day of launch we were still building. Wow. Now, does the Doctor Who team get to see anything or is it just pretty much the BBC executives? Um, no, no, we go through, brand, yeah, the brand team, yes, everything, yeah, there's, there's really two stages, there's BBC Consumer Products, BBC Worldwide, where our producer is in London, and then there's a brand team in Cardiff, and everything goes to the brand team, absolutely, yeah, um, they sign up on, on and everything, they've been amazing too, it's been, a, a really, we've worked on IPs in the past, which haven't been this smooth, because you, it's very easy to turn up, you know, in a situation, on the other side of the table is somebody who's, who's not a gamer, who's a businessman, who maybe doesn't even understand the products that we're, you know, we're building around, because they're, you know, just part of the, a cog in the business. But the BBC, everyone there is a hardcore Doctor Who fan. Everyone we've worked with, at the very least, understands the game we're trying to make. And a lot of them are game industry professionals who've been around for many, many years. 
so it has been a great experience, and the guys in Cardiff are, are um, as amazing as the guys in London. Everyone's been great. Cool. Yeah, that's really neat. That's a. Uh, I, I'm not a technical person, so um, I can't imagine what it actually is required to put something like this together. So, but I, I can at least, if I don't even if I don't understand it, I know what I like, and so I, I've. I've certainly been playing it for the better part of the month and uh, really enjoying it. So, you know, it's it's, it's, it's tough. It's, you know, we, when we first got into it, we didn't understand the sort of legal steps we'd have to go through to get so many people on the screen. So we launched with, I don't know, it's like 200 enemies and allies, mm -hmm. each of which was created by somebody and they, they or their estate has to sign off on it. And if it's an actor or an actress, they have to sign off on the likeness and it's all in negotiation. So even adding one new character to the game, it still needs to go through a lot of steps uh, mm. to clear that. And luckily, that's just been you know it's been pretty smooth all the way through. But it is it's a lot of work just to get something on the screen compared to just I'm drawing a new character. Hey, it's in the game because I said so. Um, it, it's not that. <laughs> for each for each um, release of a character, so be it a, a doctor or a companion, how many pieces of artwork do you have to create? I mean. It seems like you would need at least the the main profile picture and the the headshot for the in-game play. Yeah, that's what we try to finish with is, is that. But to get the you know we have to do versions and then we get feedback from the actors and actresses sometimes and we make changes or or BBC gives feedback and you know we we tweak and change. Um, it takes a while to get there, but you know everyone has to be happy at the end before it goes out. Certainly, certainly. Well, it's very cool to, to see the, the artwork in particular. I think that was one of the first things that sold me on the game is, is I saw it, I saw the options of the number of people that I could play, uh, especially during the Christmas when you were releasing a couple of the, uh, the specials via code. Um, and that was uh, it's great. And I know looking forward, I have a whole long list of uh, <laughs> characters I cannot wait to see. And it seems like, um, you know, with the amount of options you're giving currently that there's a very good chance that I will not be disappointed with, with that list. So. Well, we have, we have eight fan favorites, uh, the first two we've announced, uh, another six, and they're all, they're all, they're all, you'll know them, they'll be big characters, you know, it'll, it'll, there'll be very few fans who don't, don't have three or four of those they, you know, they really gravitate towards. And then in there we're going to do a couple of really special um, costumes, outfits for a couple of the doctors, which a lot of people have, have been asking for, so we're going to do those as well. Um, what, 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 which is because you know these don't have to go through as much likeness. The uh, the tenth Doctor, uh, what's the, uh, what the hell's the word? I'm like, tuxedo, tuxedo, tenth yeah. Doctor tuxedo outfit. Everyone was asking for like, hell, we should totally do a tuxedo outfit. How cool would that look? Uh, so we're going to do that. With, and the other one I think we're doing is the eighth Doctor TV movie outfit. I think we're trying to do I as well. That. <laughs> that was another one that a lot of people asked for. Sure. So, that, so they'll be coming with a load of new characters over the next few weeks while we ramp up into um, the full season five release. Actually, what we're doing is um, one, one thing that I loved doing in, in, as before we launched the game was writing the narrative stuff, writing the story. And there was only so much we could get in before launch. So over the last few weeks, I've written, I've doubled the amount of uh, story in the first two seasons. And that's now going to the brand team, and hopefully we can get that in. And then we're going to add a, a five-episode epilogue to the end of season six, which will wrap up um, the Sontaran threat and land on the real, the real threat of this story and introduce a couple of really amazing characters who people are going to freak out over. And that leads straight into uh, season five, which will have a lot more narrative as it, as it leads through, um, through, through that. And that'll include, I think we're putting Time of the Doctor in the beginning of season five, uh, cool. along with some of the Christmas content that, that, so it doesn't get lost. We're just going to do a bit of, bit of Christmas content leading into Time of the Doctor, then launch into season five. Well, it's pretty interesting that you get a chance to, in, in your own way, write for Doctor Who. So, uh, as a longtime fan, that must make you very happy. Yeah, it's it's a weird thing. I know that was never the intent of the project. It was never the intention, you know, to, to be heavily story driven. But after we released the game, um, you know, one of the biggest complaints was there's just not enough story that, that peters off. But that was that was sort of by design at the beginning. We had a limited amount of time, and we we thought we'd launch it off. And it would establish this sort of cadence, this rhythm to the story, where you go in and out of old episodes, and in between them, then we have levels that try to keep the Santaran and Zygon sort of stories alive. Um, but people really wanted more story, so we just write and writing. Well, you're dealing with a franchise that uh, is, to to steal their term, you know, fairly wibbly wobbly as far as time is concerned. So you you have 50 years worth of history, and you can cherry pick. I mean, I know that your intent is to uh, correct me if I'm wrong 
is to cover the the entirety of the history of Doctor Who. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, we wanted to keep going backwards. It'll be so. Uh, it'll be sort of the, the backbone of it will be going through seasons. But we really, you know, the story was written so that time is really collapsing around the Doctor, which gives us a lot of free leeway to pull in old characters, you know, to have weird things happen within the context of our story. So we'll, we'll start weaving in, you know, old stories. And, and you know, like Time of the Doctor doesn't fit to the beginning of season five, but people want it and it's just Ed, so we may as well put it in there and have a little Christmassy thing leading into season five. Uh, you know, and then, so, 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 you know, we want to throw in a lot more older characters. We want to get all the Doctor. In soon. We have, a, you know, I think we have three new doctors coming uh, in, the next, in the next month or so. Um, we have a lot of stuff coming from all through history, but we, you know, we needed to launch with the stuff people under, you know, the mass market understood. People understand seven and six of seasons. They're all fresh in your mind. You know, that was our solid launch and get that out. And now we, now we get to play a little bit. Now we get to sort of go through and what would be really cool on the, on the screen in the game. What would be really fun to do. Um, what. I look forward to the fifth doctor. He's my doctor. I've met Peter a few times. I've interviewed him. We've become really good friends. So I'll be honest. I cannot wait till we get the fifth doctor. I'm in the new waiting for that. Well, I hope we get, yeah, the, the plan is to get everyone in. Um, and we, we're certainly, as you've seen from the last you know, month, we're really powering towards getting as much of that in as possible. Um, as far as Doctor Who, are you strictly kind of aiming for a strict televised program, like BBC televised, or would you might consider expanding to other Doctor Who franchises like the Big Finish Audio or um, comic strips or the animated stuff, or is it just really kind of staring more? Right, right now I'm focused on the TV show. I would love to start talking to the Big Finish guys, to be honest. Cause I, you know, I'm listening to Dark Eyes now, uh, and I'm, I'm loving it. Yeah. And, you know, one of the problems that the, you know, the core show has is there's is a big gap with the Eighth Doctor, um, and he doesn't you know, what is it, an hour and a half plus seven minutes of content on TV? Right. Not, not far from that, I think. Uh, so it would be nice. It, it would be nice as we go down that line of maybe talking to those guys and, and doing something uh, that, that gives more content. Gives, you know, I think Dark Eyes would be a great level, you know, a great series of levels in, in the game. Uh, but right now we're focused on the TV stuff. But True. we do love the whole, I guess, the expanded, the extended universe is probably the, the term for it. But um, we love it all. Well, speaking of the uh, the the '96 movie, um, are there is there any kind of weird logistics as far as getting um, content from that? You said you were going to be using the costume from it, but could we expect to potentially be... Grace Holl uh, Holiday uh, Holloway from at one point in time? Grace may maybe on a list somewhere. Um, as far as I know, there's not there's not an issue. Uh, it's, it's it was a you know, BBC co-production, I think. So it's I think it's all. I haven't been told by anybody that there's an issue with that. But who, but who knows? <laughs> Speaking of uh, other content, I mean, could we eventually see like um, some of the Torchwood characters or the kids that appeared on the Sir Jane uh, Adventures? Um, are those possibilities? Um, the interesting thing about Torchwood is a lot of the actors in those roles appeared in, in Doctor Who. Yeah. Uh, which makes Torchwood a nice, easy one uh, to sort of gravitate towards. Uh, so yeah, that, that is in the future, seeing um, some of the Torchwood guys in the game, uh, which we're working on now. It's really a lot of fun. Give us something new to play with. Awesome. Uh, and every time I go back to Cardiff, I go to the Yanta Wall, which I love. Have you, have you seen it? The, I, have, the big... I mean, I know about it, but I haven't actually seen it. It's still it. there. It's, it's an amazing um, the amount of love uh, for that character and, uh, and, and then for that series in Cardiff. That was a, um, that was a tough episode to watch. Oh, the, the Anto, uh, was it, like, episode four of um, Children of Earth, mm -hmm. oh, near the end of that? I, I, I can't say that I got I've watched it once, uh, and uh, it's going to be another couple of years before I can bring myself. I, I, can't, I can't watch that again. I can't watch that, that, that whole series. That uh, was it series three, series, series three. Uh, it, it was, Susan and I walked out, it was like, this is some of the best sci-fi we've watched in the last ten years. Yes, absolutely. Also, some of the most harrowing, uh, you know, as a parent, it's... Going back and watch, uh, and I think that's the reason we haven't gone back because it is—it's not an easy thing to watch. It's—it's it's no. very, uh, it's very heavy in terms of sci-fi. Yes, it doesn't it hold its punches. I just rewatch it just because of Capaldi, because I just wanted you know to get a feel for him. Yes. Uh, after the announcement, and it just yeah, that series is just—it's stunning for sci-fi. Yeah. 
Uh, okay, so I, I have, <laughs> it's now, now I have like 10 more questions I want to ask than I originally did. Um, so, <laughs> well, you know, here's, here's the thing. You, you're talking games, we like games. You're talking about who, we love who. So, uh, you know, like you said earlier, we could sit and talk about it all day. Uh, yeah. But I, I got a couple of questions about um, the, the gameplay itself. Uh, sure. So um, right now, a lot of the, the my favorite characters that I've been playing, I've maxed out the levels of those uh, currently at, at um, I guess, level 44 stars. Um, yeah. And it seems like um, certainly Series 6, the levels were harder than Series 7. Um, so I, I make an assumption that as we jump into Series 5, those will also be a little bit more challenging. Is that what we're thinking as we go further back? It's We're going to see a difficulty increase? Yeah, yeah. I, I want to sort of level it off a little bit. So it's not sort of a numbers game, but more of a, a puzzle complexity thing. You know, yes. we're, we're working on new abilities for the enemies. Oh, thank oh, you. Good. That's possible. Awesome. Because the game was built, uh, it's, it's a massively data-driven backend. It's, really, it's a really great extendable system where we can say, okay, let's have something where he makes... I know all green gems just do less in the same way as we have that heal siphon in there. We can we can get that in very quickly. Um, so we're looking at doing doing that stuff as well. So I, I, what I'd like to do is not really not harder but different, right? You know, and different challenges. This level, this level. What I what I didn't want to do in the first um, rollout of the first thirty hours of game, which was thirty plus hours of game we launched with, was have boards which are you know. No greens drop in this level is a very easy one to do. You know, no blue gems, and it changes it up that way. Uh, I think we put one in the famine area, which was which is like that, just to try it out to see if it works. But we'll st we'll start seeing more playful stuff like that in season five. Okay. It'll make you you'll make you think a little bit. Maybe swap him out for him because there's no healing in this level, or there's no this in this level, and that's 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 an easy thing to do. We can do that now. But things like that that keep it different and not necessarily just a numbers game. Where it's not just sort of these games very easily turn into the end game being you're fighting for an hour because it's just numbers getting bigger, you know? And if you can beat 10 seconds, you can be a few rounds, then the rounds just cycle, and you can, you can win the whole thing if you have enough time. And we didn't want to fall into that. We wanted to feel more like a, a dungeon crawler. We, we're huge mm -hmm. RPG fans. We love dungeon crawling, playing the MMOs together. And that's our, sort of the backbone experience was, let's build something where there's this rhythm where, oh, look, he's done this to me, and I can counter him, or I can fight through, and then they do something else. Oh, no, he's stunned, and now I'm going to heal, or I'm going to do this. So it feels more like a toolbox where you're coming into a situation, and, uh, and you have these, these things to fix what comes at you or ways to overcome, you know, what, what are the challenges. You know, for example, in the beginning of well, early in season uh, six, we started adding poison in there as a game element. And it was it's very, very, it was very, you know, the lowest level of poison we could possibly put in at first, because we always intended to give you a doctor who would cure poison by the time anyone got to it. Right. And that came, that came in a bit late, but now, right before you hit that, you get the tool to solve that problem. Sure. Because the, uh, I want to say, McGowan, I think the eighth doctor has pure cure poison. Right. So when you get there, you have him, it's like, okay, for this, I'm not going to pull out the 11th, put in the eighth, because he has this critical ability. And you start to feel, as a user, you start to understand that the, there is more of a toolbox. There is certain things that people bring to fights. And we want to leverage that more in five, where it's, oh, here's this sort of level. I should really come in with this, with this group. Or maybe I, this is a suboptimal one. I'm going to level this guy up because he has whatever the equivalent of pure, pure poison is that lets me get through a little bit easier than before. So it's still doable. There's no sort of hard stop, but you'll be able to play a bit, you know, play around a bit and, and have these challenges that make you think. Sure. I love, one of the things I love is being able to pair up uh, characters that I like who may, may or not have spent a lot of screen time together and put them in there. Yes. And, uh, uh, I, I found myself when I reached the, the, the poison levels still wanting to run Eleven, uh, the, the Matt Smith doctor, but I needed a companion that could cure it. And the only one I could find was uh, the punishment medic uh, who I... Um, had not leveled up once, so I had to go back and level that character up to a, a, a level where she wasn't, she was actually a beneficial to me. It was really, it was a lot of fun. Um, the, the, there was a lot of um, expletives shouted at my phone uh, at the poison <laughs> level, which, as it should be, because I, uh, I thought, no, poisons can't be that, but oh no, as the entire whole life bars go down in, in, in one go. Fun. fun. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, it's, we, we had, that doctor came out a bit late, we, but we, it was always, the, the intention for the design at a high level is, you know, we, you have these tools, mm -hmm. and you should have 
you know, at least a basic way of countering these. It might not be the best poison cure in the world, but you should have a poison cure to let you get through it. And sure. if you want to specialize, you know, you want to make that one more powerful or get a different poison, then you can do that. Um, but you should always have at least, you know, one, one tool in your toolbox to, to get through any situation. And, and we want to build more of that. You know, somebody, we get great comments on our feedback, you know, on our support line. Somebody suggested uh, an ally who could unlock all locks on the board. And I thought that was a great idea. Oh, nice. What a great little tool to take into a fight. If it's a Cyberman heavy fight, why not take in X so-and-so who can... Huh. Who can remove locks on the board? So if you're in a pickle and, and you, you get a bad turn and all these locks appears and you really need to heal up, you can just negate them. And then you know, you, so it's, that's the design mentality is really puzzly uh, yeah. rather than just num a numbers game. Well, it's great because it's a very specific skill set. It's a very powerful skill, but it's not going to come into play all the time. But when you have it, you know, you're going to use it, which is which is great. Yeah. So that's that's a sort of mentality towards. Uh, putting these groups together and designing the, the abilities is things that work well together. The teams are sort of, the colors are sort of coming together with different types now a little bit more. You know, you can say you know, green is X and then blue is more like this. And we're trying to have the doctors lead the teams a little bit. So if you're building a team around a certain color, it works really well, you know, with, with the, the, the different abilities within uh, those, those, uh, those characters who have that colors. I haven't encountered it yet, but I was wondering uh, either do we have or will we have a character who can change the, the colors to black? Um, do we have a change to black? Um, I've encountered a lot of switching, but not not too black. And I, I, was actually, I actually believe that's Storm again next week. I that's... believe... I don't, I don't have it in front of me. I'll have to chase Susan up. But I believe Storm again has changed blue to yellow to black. I believe. Uh, so yeah, we, we want to have those in each team. Um, it's just as you know, as we grow the the number of companions in the game, it'll start fleshing out those things that seem to be missing, like you know, color changes to black. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really cool. That'll be a lot of fun because uh, I have had a blast with um, K9. Yeah, K9 right uh, now is one of my favorites. <laughs> was definitely the first once um, once we put in those codes and we got some of the the early um, gems that we could use to upgrade them, and then once we got the big code towards the end. Where I had finally had enough to jump into level three, K9 was it was definitely the first one on there because the the negative ability has is just a lifesaver. It's yeah, it's and that's, and that's, you know that's again that's sort of it's it's a great little tool to have, but isn't an absolute requirement you know to play Absolutely. through the game. It's, it's it's sort of personal preference of how you like to play these types of games and what sort of you know rhythm you want through these levels and, and how you deal with threats. I was explaining to my wife, you know, what I was playing. I said, well, you know, it's a Doctor Who game. And then she, you know, says, so I'll never see you again. I was like, it's a puzzle-solving game. And she's, you know, she does this. And then I said, it's a puzzle-solving game where you can collect and customize the companions. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you just look at the calendar and try to figure out a day where we'll be able to see each other again at some point in time in the future. So... <laughs> Incredibly interesting. And you were mentioning um, new abilities for the um, the, the enemies, and I, I gotta say, I'd love the Weeping Angels ability to um, just absolutely reduce uh, items to the stone. And it made me think, oh, I can't wait until we get to a, a Frontios level where we get Tractators who actually will bring down uh, the meteorites to uh, take down take down levels. Maybe you know, blow up the first top level or something along those lines. Get it nice and story story specific. There's, there's a few I want to, you know, I, I think the Daleks need their own ability, and I want to go back and, and rebuild the levels with a new ability when I get up. But that feels like it should be like, like violent and blasty, like they just stop blowing gems off the board. You know, it feels like that. Uh, uh, remove them entirely, or replace them with something else. Just remove them. It's like bang, there goes a two by two square, and it just falls in. And and on it, they're just blasting the board away as you're trying to sort of build a strategy. I think could be could be fun. Um, another one I want to do is, is have something spread across the board. Like, a gem catches on fire, and if you don't match it in that turn, it'll spread to another one. So oh, you have this spread slowly burning across the board. So it's things like that I'd like to, to put in, which bring you know, more puzzly elements. Do I deal with it straight away, or do I you know, let it keep moving? Or do I, you know, if I pick it and move that gem, I probably take damage as I'm moving it around. You know, just have, have threats on the board, and then have counters. You know, this guy puts out fires. You know, is the easy one. And... and and keep building it that way. Uh, but I do want to get a load of uh, new enemy stuff in and ally stuff for the beginning of Season 5. Wow, that's really cool. 
Yeah, that's what I need. Anything with um, maybe making the, the board, it's, can you affect the board itself, make, make uh, less options, make the board smaller, or would that be... Uh, like, that's one of the few things we can't do. We right. can pretty much do, you know, we built, the game was built uh, to have an end game which is way in the future, but we designed for it and built parts of it. So things like dual colored characters, uh, we can do in code already. Mm -hmm. So they'll, they'll start rolling those in later, having ca characters who are like blue and black. Um, oh. And the other thing we can do is we can track uh, the positions of, of gems on the board. So let's say if you do a cross, like three up and then, you know, cross through the middle, that'll do a special ability if you have a certain person in your team. Cool. Or, right. you know, if, if you match three greens and three blues on the same time, this happens. So we can, we can track the board for changes on a turn and do cool things with it then. You know, as as more complexity down the line, as people get into this and understand the game, we can start saying, okay, if, this ca if you ever match more than seven blacks in a row, this guy does something special. Oh, we, can add, we can add these nuances. I think that's brilliant that you've, you, you know, you've already thought about that. You, know, you have it in the back of your mind. It's sort of programmed in, and then when you want to actually activate it and actually use it, it it's there to be used. I think, I think that's great. I think it's brilliant as a game designer. Yeah, it was it was tough. It was it was it was you know it was going to be an early thing. We thought we would put it in early to differentiate this from everyone else in the sort of same puzzly space, and then we found that the you know when you start playing the game and people start locking gems straight away or you see gems flying off the board, that immediately makes it feel different from the normal puzzle game. It feels more reactive, you know. The, and then we found that in the thirty hours we put in, there was this learning curve, and this and as people fell in love with it, we're throwing in another mechanic like specific shapes on a board doing something. If you do a square, it does this. If you get all four corners in matches, it, whatever, you know, whatever the mechanic is. Mm -hmm. It was just too complex for where we were in the game. Uh, so it'll, it'll come in. It's just trying to gauge where people are and how they're playing. And if you got to the end of season six, you've got a solid grasp of this game right now. And I feel confident we can start stepping that up in complexity, not, not just number difficulty, but conceptually, you know, throwing in multicolor characters, for example. At the beginning would be confusing. At the end of season six, you, you probably understand the game so thoroughly that you can say, oh, that, that guy's blue and black, and I immediately know what, know what that means, and I understand how that works. That's cool, that's cool. So, because um, I know that you're wanting to go back into the history of the show, uh, how, off, uh, hmm, how far apart do you think that you imagine the series being before, you know, between six and five hasn't been that long? Um, we just, just got to keep building. We, we just have a team who's just, we have a team who just constantly built. Uh, so things slowed down in December because we got a lot of feedback asking for more Christmas stuff. So we built more Christmas levels and we did the, you know, we did the, the Christmas day one and then we did the fan only boxing day, which had like the wooden Cybermen in it. We, want, we wanted to try to, one thing we really want to do is just be much more reactive to, you know, the show going forward or things airing. And we wanted to prove that we could do something the day after the Christmas episode came out. So the BBC sent us some information on the wooden Cybermen and some promo shots. We built them, and we got them in a level. So right after the show aired, we, you know, we, we launched the level. So that, you know, so December pushed things back, and now we're doing the fan favorite stuff. But we, we, are constantly, we have a, a team just working constantly every day. Uh, so it's, it's going to come out whenever we finish building these, these levels. You know, and I guess the one big thing is you know, how long is five going to be? How much story do we want to put in the middle? Um, how big are the levels each going to be? What we found is, in the beginning, we needed short, snappy levels. So you play Nightmare and Silver. It's, it's a couple of levels. There's like three waves in each. It's like snap, 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 snap. But then you can get your teeth into things. and You know, you get to A Good Man Goes to War, and that's like five levels with six or seven waves in each. Mm -hmm. And it feels like you're going, it feels much more epic. Yeah. So I want to try to keep a bit of that where, you know, Time of the Doctor shouldn't be three waves, it should feel a bit more epic. It, sh it should have some weight there with all these things attacking Christmas, you know. And so the levels are getting a bit longer. Uh, you know, like Beast Below. Beast Below is an amazing episode. I, I love that episode. There's so much great stuff. There's so much great imagery. There's the marketplace with all the flags, all the British flags, yeah. which yeah. is great as a background, you know, to fight some smilers in. And then you have the lift uh, against the, the, the white smiler in the lift. And then you have um, the tentacles of the star whale fighting you in that black sort of uh, construction tent. And then you have all the, the stuff in the, the, the Tower of London and, and Hawthorne and everything else going and the, the, the winders. So those levels are going to be longer and full of really fun stuff. So I think we're just going deep into levels, uh, which might just push everything out, you know, a little bit. But we are constantly just rolling out new content. You know, we, we could just throw out five in a very shallow way, but I, I think if we're going to do it once, we may as well do it 
Right. You know, you should feel you're there. You should fight in the marketplace. You should fight in the lift. You should you should see the Star Whale tentacles, and you should go to the Tower of London. You know, it, it would feel it would be a shame to jump any of that and then leave it behind and never put it in. Get a get a little uh, cutaway scene where we get to vote. Get to watch the video and vote, and <laughs> and. Uh... And if yes, yeah, yeah, so if you like, want to progress further, further no. And then you go back to the beginning, and things have changed just slightly because you don't remember how to do something. Right. That's really cool. Well, okay, so um, while we are, the game is moving backwards. Uh, no, I don't shouldn't say moving backwards, but chronologically, and as the show moving backwards, we are going to still get Doctor Who. So we're going to be getting episodes uh, for series eight coming out. Do you foresee being able to update as the show's coming out? Um, you know episodically or maybe wait until the entirety of it's out so you can get the feel for the storyline and then maybe come out with it then? Um, I'd like for it to come out really quickly. I, I love the idea that, you know, um, I don't know what time it's going to air, like 8 p.m. on Saturday, the show ends and we can launch it at 9 p.m., you know, and, and if you want to play the game. But it, that depends on a lot of things. It'd be, I think it would be really great to bring things, you know, we have, it's, it was built to do that. The platform, the game, everything was built to be able to, uh, to, to have that sort of reactive um, element to the content. So yeah, I'd, I'd like to bring it out. How we fit in, I don't know yet. I've decided, decided how that happens because by then, you know, it's August. We'll be season five will be out. Probably season four will be out. Do we do we then jump into future? Do we you know find some clever way to write it in, mm -hmm. which is probably what will end up happening. But I think I think fans are sort of. I don't think anyone's going to be really angry if it, things are out of order. I think people really yeah. like, you know, it, it jumps around a bit. And, and if you stick with it and people are playing, then, yeah, it's just, just more cool content. We have several years of Moffat, so we're used to things being in, in, in a, in a non-sequential non order. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, uh, and any possibility that we'll get, I don't know, something like a, along the lines of an experience point bonus for having certain companions teaming up anytime in the future? Um, that's... It, there's two things Susan really is pushing for and harasses me about every day. <laughs> one is, um, and this is probably the one that's going to come sooner, is having costumes change the characters in some way. Yes. So, yes. you know, uh, when Clara puts the red dress on, she becomes a red character and has this new ability. Also, you know, that's the yeah. bad, quick example, but, but giving you some flexibility sure. to, to, to change. You know, make the costumes mean something a little bit more and give them some gameplay significance. And then the second one is sets, is, is having bonuses. If you If you... Have the whole Pater Noster gang in your group, mm -hmm. and the ele and the eleventh. Then that means something, and you know all damages plus five percent or whatever you know whatever that is. Uh, it, we are definitely talking about it. That sort of stuff we love. Um, it's just it's right now. It's just you know clouds. We've lost all the programming to cloud saving for weeks to fix that up, and that's done now. And then you know we need to get Kindle out uh, in the next couple of weeks, and so the new code stuff. But we are absolutely talking about all that stuff. We 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 love that. That would be great. That that definitely for the the gamer for all of us and the collector and all of us. So that would be uh, exceptionally well to have something along those lines. Wait, you just dropped about ten seconds. Yeah, we. Oh. I, I don't know. I don't know if we lost anything. We have, we just saw that we, we dropped for a second. I, I just gave you the the greatest information you could ever have. <laughs> Mind blowing. I solved all your problems right there. <coughs> uh, oh, nice. Anyone who's ever watched our show before knows that that definitely did not happen. Um, <laughs> uh, I have, I just have more questions about characters and such. But we've answered most of them. I just, I, I definitely, because I know we talked about it. I was just, uh, just such an old, a fan of the old beginnings with, uh, with, with Hartnell and Troughton. Um, and I, I can't did wait. Did you watch to... Adventure in Space and Time? Absolutely. Loved it. Oh, how good was that? How good was that? How. I was close to tears at the end. What a great ending, having Matt Smith there I and just look over. It was beautiful. Yeah, What's that? I, it. I, I was, I was, I was not expecting it. And when they brought Smith out, and they just tears. I admit it. I was, it was beautiful. I think it was. I think it was such a one. I, I love Gaddis. I, I, I think um, he's a great writer. I, I, League, League of Gentlemen. I don't know if you've ever seen it. British comedy show. I, we watched that like obsessively. I, I think that whole crew is amazing at what they do. Yeah. Yeah. It's great to see him writing some drama. You know, I mean, like Doctor Who drama, drama, not sort of playful sci-fi Doctor Who. Uh, now, uh, use your use your uh, contacts with the BBC and tell them to release it uh, in in the states so I can I can watch it legally uh, on my television. <laughs> I, yeah, I think it's quite hard. I tried to get my parents to watch it, and they couldn't find it on, on like on the, uh, you know BBC catch-up sort of stuff. Uh, I think it's 
I think you can get it digitally. I think you can download it on iTunes, but I don't think you can. Well, I know that only the UK and Canada currently have it on on DVD release, and they're not planning on releasing it on Blu-ray. That's a shame because it really is beautiful. I thought it was an amazing show. It was really great. Uh, any questions about um, Gatiss potentially taking over in the future? Uh, you know, you just show them that, and, and uh, you know that his, his his hearts are in the right place. So. <laughs> I, I just wondered, because, you know, we were talking about how great would it be to play as Hartnell and what Hartnell's ability would be, and then we were both discussing how cool would it be if those Hartnell and Troughton levels were in black and white um, instead of being in color, just just cut. I, this is, we've talked about it. I, we have talked about it. I, I'm, I'm really tempted to, like, do them all in black and white at first or give you an option. Like, if Hartnell's in the team, at least all the portraits are black and white. So it, Oh, and we can oh. we can we can desaturate the the top of the screen and make that black and white. The the problem is the board. Um, right. You know, do we do right. symbols on the board if you want to go fully? We are we are talking about. It. I love the idea that as you go back, you, we would not just desaturate, but go towards that seventies Technicolor. You know, use the same colors that they used, and then and then give it a bit of grain on the screen. You know, so it feels a little bit older, and and keep going back. Uh, yeah, all that stuff. I I would love to. Uh, Get some good CSL. Well, I mean, you for Christmas you had those the gems the jewels were were um, Christmassy Christmassy. So <laughs> that that was certainly I, I remember playing it during Christmas and then once they disappeared I was confused because I was like well yes I understand that the pink heals me but what happened to the whatever the appropriate icon was at that time. <laughs> that was we can any nearly any piece of content in the game we can stream down and then we realized one day when we as soon as I was wandering around we're like. I wonder if we can just stream gems in. I wonder if we can just arbitrarily decide to just throw gems in and then they appear on everyone's games. And the team was like, yeah, you could totally do that. They, you just send them down. Uh, so that's how that happens. It's just, let's do something fun. But I think, I think the next thing on that, we'll, we want to put an option in the option screen so you can choose between gem sets. And then we want to start doing gem sets per character, maybe, per doctor. Oh. Having like, you know, the seventh doctor gem set, uh, or, you know, or as well as theming it around, you know, the Valentine's Day jam set or whatever we decide to do. Uh, but we do want to do more of that. We, we thought it was really fun and playful and, you know, it's a nice thing to do. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it, it shows your appreciation for the, the franchise and the stories and, and the fans, too. So there's certainly no doubt that, that, you know, you have our best interest at heart there. So, so one thing we like to find out, especially with everybody we interview, um, is how, what was your introduction to Doctor Who? Um, so I was, I, I had some look, I was born in, in 78, so my, the beginning of my Doctor Who experience, I guess I was four or five, so it was the early eight, the, the one I remember, the, the two I remember, I, I can't remember the dates, but they must be around there, um, Paradise Towers, mm -hmm. how was it called? That must, what was that, must have been 84, 85, somewhere around there, that's, that's the first one I have, four, so. that's, that's the first one I have a memory of seeing on the screen. And, and I didn't realize I had a memory until I was going, for the game, I was going back through all the old episodes, and it hit me. And I was like, oh my god, I, I know that episode. And it was, and that's as far back as I can remember is, is Paradise Tower. The other one, uh, it's called uh, it's Greatest Show in the Galaxy, or something like that, I think is a sequel. I remember seeing that, I, I don't know if it was a rerun of that, but that was sort of my introduction, it was uh, early, mid-80s, hiding behind the sofa while, you know, my parents put Doctor Who on. Uh, and then, of course, it, it vanished. It went. It, it just it was there, and then it wasn't. Uh, and then we just well, I watched Rose. In, you know, I watched the TV movie, of course, in the middle. But when Rose came on, um, it was just love all over again, and the beginning of another um, obsession that it, it ended up with a video game. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. So, who's your favorite Doctor? Uh, it has to be McGann. I, I love them all, but it's it's a love out of just loss of not having. You know, it's not like we saw him on screen for three, and they're like, oh, he was great, and I love him because he was great through three seasons. It's like, he was so good in the hour and a half he was on screen, I would have loved to see more of him, and I love him for, for that, you know? Uh, so, I, I, you know, I, I want to, I'd love, like I said earlier, the big finish, I'd love to do more with him, something different with him, just to give him some, something uh, in the game. Even if it's just lines now and then, it'd be nice just to have him visible. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it has to be McGann. Susan... Susan, I, I think, is, is Tennant. She sort of flip-flops between us 10 and 11 all the time. But I think, I think Tennant is, wins out, but it, for me, it's, it's eight. 
I showed my wife a 50th anniversary special last night for the first time. Uh, and uh, after it was done, she had some really good questions and she thought for a moment. <laughs> like, what the hell is going on? I know she, she was really, she, bless her heart. I, there's a jar in my house that is nearly filled with change. And that is the Doctor Who reference jar. <laughs> I, I have to fill, uh, I have to put money in every time I talk about it. And it's, it's going into my savings. So it's good. It, I, I, it's kind of win-win for me, but it's, it's, um, so I think just from dealing with that, she's got it. But she turned at the end and goes, I think I like Tenet the best. I think he's my favorite. <laughs> So. Tenet, it is something about Tenet. It's, it's really interesting. I, a, a friend of mine showed that to his better half who had never seen Doctor Who before. And it's the, if, you think, if you think what happens in an episode, it's, there's no easy way into that episode. You need to know a lot of stuff for that episode. You know, that, that was a fam 50th anniversary. That wasn't to pick up new, new watches. That was, there's a lot of heavy stuff that you need to have a really good understanding of to, to really get your way through that episode. Um, it was a great one. Yeah, yeah, it certainly was. I, that with, um, oh, you just must have cheered along with us when Night of the Doctor came up. Um, that when Night of the Doctor came out, oh my God! I sat at my, I got up in the morning. We were in, I think we were in right in the middle of crunch, and I sat at my desk, and I was, it was like headline Eighth Doctor special. I was like really was, this? and I clicked on it, and it was McGann on the screen, and I just freaked out, screaming for Susan to get to a computer. Like you have to see this. I was, again, nearly in tears at the end of it. Just seeing that regeneration scene was something I never, ever thought I would see. I never thought I would see him in regeneration. Um, and it was great. It was so nice to see that and have at least a full stop at the end of, of, of that chapter, as brief as it was. The amazing thing about the is nobody knew it was coming out. And, like, I saw it before my friends in England. I was like, have you seen this yet? And they're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, right here. Watch this now. And it... It, it was incredible. The second I heard his voice, because we, we didn't get the spoiler. All we knew is none of the doctor. And the second I heard that voice, my eyes just bulged out of my head, out of excitement to see Magan as a doctor again. Yeah, we didn't get yeah. the spoiler, so that was pretty, pretty, pretty amazing. We're going to be at Gallifrey 1 um, in February in L.A. And, and Paul McGann's there. Hopefully I can shake his hand. Oh, I'm so I'm so jealous that you're going to be at Galley. Uh, we uh, I was going to buy tickets. It's going to be my first year going, and they normally don't sell out ever. Uh, and they did like a month before last year, before the actual show, and they sold out in like three weeks. Uh, I was just getting enough money and getting all the logistics together. That this was gonna be, I made it, and uh, but I I'm going to buy my ticket. As soon as they become available online for next year, um, I'm I'm gonna make the trip to California. I'm kind of excited about that because you know, I'm an East Coaster, but uh, I will I, I want to experience that with everybody. Yeah, I, I can't I can't wait. I really can't wait. We're gonna we're gonna give away thousand codes for the game, with just all sorts of really cool stuff. You know, codes unlock every single thing in the game, and just start giving out to the fans and have a little bit of a raffly sort of thing. It'll be fun. I can't wait to meet people and just talk. I, I do like talking about Doctor Who. Yeah, I can do. That. Yeah, that's fantastic. What do you think about Capaldi? I, I, um, there's a show called The Thick of It, mm -hmm. and, and it was a TV movie called, uh, well, a TV movie, it's called In the Loop, a uh, co-production with America, and I love The Thick of It, um, hugely. You know, I've seen all of them many, many, many times. I think Capaldi's an amazing actor. Uh, I can't wait to see where he takes the Doctor and what accent he's going to use, and uh, yeah, I just can't wait. Well, he's using a Scottish. He's going to use his natural accent. They've already said that. Oh, I missed that. Okay. Oh, that'll be awesome. Yeah, why not? That'll be brilliant. I've been going back and watching some of his older stuff. I, I rewatched uh, The Lair of the White Worm the other night. Um, yeah. With him and Hugh Grant, and uh, that was a that was a, a a popular one with me in, in high school. So I'm gonna write a little report on that for. Uh, so watch out for that. <laughs> so. so. So I mean, is there any? I mean, we we have covered almost an hour here. Is there anything else you want to say about the game or Doctor Who or anything in anything? Because you're just you're you're just a plethora of information and it's <laughs> wonderful to talk to. I mean, I can just I can honestly talk to you all day about Doctor Who with, with, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, we're making the game for fans, and we listen to everything that's said. Um, and we, all we can do is open up more avenues for people to talk to us. We have a Facebook page, a Twitter page, we have a support email address, and we have a newsletter. There's a million ways to sort of to get in touch with us, and we, we listen. Every, everything that comes in, we read and listen, and, and, and it means something. You know, we, we weigh everything. Um, 
So if they want this to get the newsletter, how do they find that? Uh, at tinyrebelgames.com on the front page, there's a newsletter sign up that Susan put together a few weeks ago. So we're going to use that to uh, send out just updates and you know, developer diary sort of stuff and code for the game, you know, whatever, whatever sort of sounds cool at the time. Yeah, and we'll make sure that you know, we link all your Facebook, your website, your Twitter, everything with the video and in all the different places that we post these things. I think we have a new, actually, we have a new video coming out soon. Keep your eyes open. The revamped sort of little video um, with a load of new characters in there, some you haven't seen before, and a load of new gameplay, and, and some quotes from the lovely people who have been reviewing the game, which is, you know, has been very hard. I, I think out of everything, it's been really. It's easy on the beginning of a journey to say, you know, we're fans of this, we will make it for the fans, but that could go so terribly, terribly wrong, just because the things we love about Doc 2, that doesn't necessarily mean that everyone loves the same things or sees, you know, the universe in a way we see it, but it's been really great seeing some of the reviews from the hardcore Doc 2 sites, like 8 to 9 out of 10, so that's been the most, uh, most fulfilling thing, I think, of the whole project is, is hitting that goal of making something we're really, really proud of and that people genuinely love. Yeah. Yeah, in well, space. I play a lot of the mobile games, a lot of the puzzle games and stuff like that. And I mean, there's some I like, there's some I hate, but yours is up there in my top 10 favorite uh, mobile puzzle type games. I mean, it really has okay. blown me away. Uh, just the ease of picking it up, gameplay, and just everything, the, the characters, the, the being able to switch them out. I mean, it's it's so much fun. I, I don't tire of the game. I, I love it. I, I play a couple times a day just uh just to move along and level stuff up. I mean, you've really made something, I think, incredibly special there. And it is, it pays, I think, a lot of great homage to Doctor Who, uh, past, present, and future, what, what we're going to be getting. I mean, it's, it's incredible. I thank you for that. Oh, no, no, no. Thank you for the comments. It's, you know, we, we always intended this. We didn't want this to be a game you picked up and you burned through in a month and you were like, oh, I'm done with that experience. I'm walking, I'm walking away. I think there's space for these games where, where they just sit on your phone. And, you know, we're adding the notifications. It'll just pop up and say, hey, so-and-so is being uh, released. And you don't have to go there every day. But, oh, look, season six came out this week. I'm going to play for a few days. You know, that sort of – because Doc 2 fans can wait. We can wait between things. Yes, we that's, can. One, that's one thing we can do is wait. Um, and as long as it's just sitting there on your phone, it's not spamming you, and there's a nice community building around it, it's – you know, I think if people love it and there's more content coming, they'll just keep it and keep popping back as – you know, as a, as a game that's always there in the background. There's always, you know – something to do on a train one day. So what you're saying is after we finish a series one, we're not going to have like uh, seven years of, of silence from, <laughs> from it. And then, then suddenly, you know, one expansion and then, uh, you know, uh, uh, another seven years or, or however it is. Is it like 36 like seasons? Six and then seven. Sorry. <laughs> How many seasons in total have there been? Is it 36? 34? Uh, something around there. Can we count the gap year specials? Because there's 26 seasons from the classic era. Uh, we just finished seven. So there's 33 um, plus the specials, plus a movie. So yeah, so that's going to take me a few years to get to there. I, I'm not sure what we'll do after that, but we'll, if we get that far, we'll just be, we'll just keep going. I'm sure we'll find something to do. Well, by the time we get there, there'll be like three or four new seasons ahead of us that have sure. been filmed. Finish those and go back to do the, the Brain of Morbius Doctors and the. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah. Oh, the Peter Cushing movies. Peter Cushing movies. Uh, you can. Do the, um, I was, you, oh, I, that that actually strangely going back to my first memories. Um, those movies are amazing. They are. Well, they're, they're pretty, but they, I love them. I love them passionately. Um, you know, Daleks with, with fire extinguishers and jelly beans. <laughs> and, you know, it's... Flamethrowers. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I do love the, those movies. They're amazing. Uh, it'd be great to put those in. Wow. Uh, yeah, it'd be very cool. Very cool. So I want to thank you for t taking an hour of your time to uh, talk. <laughs> oh, no, no worries. This has been, this has been a, a huge pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Um, I, honestly, any time you know you... you ever want to come back or just to talk Doctor Who? I mean, anytime. We'd love to have you back. And I mean, honestly, just to talk Doctor Who and your experiences and because we love interviewing just the Whoby inside of people too because it's fascinating how we all come at Doctor Who differently, but we all share this love of this crazy madman with a box that's been with us 50 years now. Well, yeah, when we start getting closer to the season uh, five stuff coming out, we can we can talk in more detail about how it was you know going through picking the episodes and the characters and and just go you know dive into each of the episodes and get all geeky about what we love about uh, you know picture of the Daleks and things. Yes. <laughs> oh, that, that's okay. that's all I can say is yes. I think that maybe we should do that. Easy. Okay. Yeah, I'm up for that.
Cool. Cool. So I guess this is uh, uh, Galfe Pirate signing off until next time. And thanks again for our very, very special guest, Lee Cummings. Uh, Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, Lee. We appreciate it. Yes, Thank you very so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Yeah.